It's funny how big arguments start over little things. Take my friend the kingfish and his wife, Sapphire. Now, the other morning at breakfast, Sapphire didn't know it, but the first act of aggression was when she put the eggs in front of George. Here's your eggs. I'll bring you coffee in a second. than this drained out of crankcases. Now, George? Why can't you put a decent breakfast on the table before a man? Eggs overcooked, coffee ain't fit to drink, and that stringy mama laid there. I don't know whether to eat it or step on it. I guess you think you could get a better breakfast than this. I does. And I guess you think you could run the house by yourself. I does. And I guess you think you could cook clean and get along just fine all by yourself. I does. Hello? Hello, Mama. This is Sapphire. Yes, yes, yes. Did you get a letter about a week ago from Opalescent inviting us out to Chicago for a visit? I know, but I just changed my mind. Well, as soon as you can get the tickets, Mama. Fine, I'll start packing right away. Now, wait a minute, y'all, Sapphire. I'm going to have this house with you once and for all, George Stevens. Even though you sit down there and eat that breakfast without complaint, or I go to Chicago with Mama. <laughs> as soon as you get your bags packed, I'll take you to the station. <laughs> Chicago, hooray, hooray, and I don't care if she don't come back till Judgment Day. Her mama has gone with her, now won't I have fun, and now here's some milk, but I do great big bump. and sent out for reinforcement in the person of Andrew H. Brown. I ain't coming with the dinner, Kingfish. I ain't, Andy. I got it here in the pressure cooker. I'll hurry it up, though. Yeah. Hold on, Andy. We eating out again tonight. <laughs> I guess you really miss Sapphire. Yeah, Andy, a wife is like your liver. It ain't much good while you got it, but you sure miss it when it's gone. <laughs> you better not go there, Gangbase. Hey, tell me, Gangbase. You done took any steps to recoup Sapphire? Yeah, Andy, uh, I think I got a little scheme that might coop her back. Oh. Son? 
I gonna get a job. Holy smoke, Kingfish. It sounds like losing your liver done affected your mind. No, Andy, I say it. I got a pretty good one lined up here in the paper. Boy wanted department store. Extra delivery boy for shipping room. Good chance for advancement. Apply employment office. Sales department store. I going over there the first thing in the morning. Uh, you a delivery boy with all that walking? Uh, you think it'll be a little too much for me, Andy? I don't know, Kingfish. Uh, but if your legs go bad on you, your varicose veins will hold you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Andy. I done got the job. Yes, sir. It's all mine. Well, that's great news, Kingfish. Wait till Sapphire hears this. I bet it'll be the surprise of her life. Oh, sure, Andy. I write another night. I ain't telling her about the job, though. I just tell her to come back. That I got the surprise of her life for. The surprise of her life. And so, honey, if you will come back to New York as soon as you can, I got a big surprise for you. This is something you never expected to see. And believe me, honey, this surprise is going to knock your eye out. Surprise. I wonder what the one it could be, Mama. Hmm. The last time he had a surprise for you, you had to go and bail him out. <laughs> when the lady in the personnel department hired me last Monday, she told me to report to you. But aren't you a little old for a delivery boy? Oh, mister, I work hard at the job. I done written my wife already to come back home. I want to give her a big surprise. That's all right. She'll do. Here, report to Martin in the shipping room. He'll give you your route. Well, for the next few days, the kingfish really did some walking. He walked, and he walked, and he walked. department store is really keeping you on the hop, huh, King? Yeah. You know, you'd think that after six days on the job, your feet would start to get used to that pavement. Mm-hmm. Say, uh, does Sapphire know you working yet? No, Andy. I read it out to Chicago about a week ago, and I ain't got no answer since. Oh. What you got there, King B? Oh, a box from the store, Andy. Nobody home, so I gonna deliver it the first thing in the morning. Yeah, but you shouldn't open the thing, Kingfish. Now, look at that, Andy. It says, handle with care. Yeah. Now, how am I going to know what kind of care to give it unless I know what I'm handling? <laughs> wow, that's a beauty, ain't it? Hey, that's a beaver coat. Mm -hmm. Fifteen hundred dollars, including tax. Well, I don't know what beavers do, Andy, but whatever it is, there's money in it. Beautiful thing, ain't it, Andy? Yeah, but it don't do nothing for you, though, especially around the hips, there. Oh, now you know you get the fish, Andy. Oh, Kingfish, let's take this fool thing off and get some supper. I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, we'll put all my shoes on. I'll be right with you. Yeah, uh, but wait a minute here. What'll I do with this thing? Oh, just throw it on the chair, there, Andy. I'll repack it in the morning. Yeah, I'll get a drink of water. Uh, we eating home? No, we better go down to Joe's Beery and eat. My kitchen is a wee bit untidy. George! George, I'm home! I guess he ain't home. Either that or the bum is sleeping. I wonder what that surprise was he mentioned in his... Mom! Good heavens, he done robbed the first store. <laughs> oh, no, Mama. Hmm? Don't you understand? Hmm. This is a surprise he wrote me about. He said it was something that would knock my eye out. And believe me, this sure does. <laughs> Mama, just feel it. Oh, it is beautiful. Mm. Days of my life. 
my whole life. <laughs> I'm going in the kitchen and fix George a little snack for when he gets home. Yeah, well, honey, I guess I'll go on to bed. <laughs> All right, Mama. Good night, Sapphire, dear. Good night, Mama, and thanks so much for helping me with the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, George? Oh, George, I'm so glad to see you. Well, well, so my little pigeon done come back to the roost. Why, you look fine, Sapphire, just fine. Oh, thank you. I brought Mama back home with me, George. <laughs> George, me and Mama found out about that big surprise you had for me. You did? Yes, and it's just so wonderful. Oh, it's just about the most wonderful thing you've ever done in your whole life. Well, I'm glad you look at it that way, honey. I figured it would be quite a surprise to you. Oh, yes. Now, George, you sit down and read the paper. I'm going in the kitchen and fix a little snack for you. Oh, and George, it fits so beautiful around the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's that that fit who around where? Why, George, it's a fur coat. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, Sapphire. George, I'm going to make you a nice hot cup of cocoa. Now, honey, that fur coat you were referring to before, uh, you were talking about your old fur coat, wasn't you? The squirrel dyed Palomina? Oh, no. I'm talking about the new fever coat. The one hanging over the chair. The wonderful surprise you had for me. Now, there's something I got to tell you about this coat. Oh, George, this coat makes me see you in a brand new light. Now, about this coat. It makes me realize for the first time how wrong I was about you. Now, about this coat. It's just about the sweetest thing you ever have done. It shows me that despite everything, you is just about the sweetest man that ever lived, and I love you for it, George. Now, what did you want to say to me about the coat? Well, I, uh, I, uh... Darling. Oh, uh, honey, would you mind putting a little shot of cooking shea in that coat? <laughs> Now, George, you go on and get into bed. I'll bring the cocoa in to you. Just wait till we step out of society. We'll show everybody, especially that player Wilson. Andy, I done figured the whole thing out from stem to stern. And there ain't but one way to get off the hook. That's the stage of phony robbery. Steal the coat from Sapphire and then give it back to the store. That's the thing to do. Get somebody to sneak up into your apartment and steal the coat. Oh, you like the idea, eh, son? Oh, yeah, that's a perfect idea. Of course, you're going to have to get somebody pretty stupid to do that, because that's a dangerous job. Anybody to do that would have to be crazy. Now, here's the way I figured it would work. Now, the night around 11, when me and Sapphire sleep, I leave the front door unlocked. That's the stuff. That's the way to do it. And then, Andy, you won't have no trouble getting into the apartment. <laughs> and you can get the coat from me tomorrow morning. <laughs> hey, Kingfish, did I just agree to do something that I say anybody would have to be crazy to do? Oh, no, I don't want no part of it. Now, wait a minute, Andy. We shook hands on the thing. My hand's still warm. Now, don't be no Indian, promiser. <laughs> Well, if I don't promise to do it, I guess I'll have to do it. Because I ain't the kind of fella that goes back on his word. Now, that's right. Now, you come up about 11 o'clock, the coat will be in the seat of chest, and you sneak in the apartment, and then...
like a front door. You probably had a nightmare, honey. You know them chicken croquettes was a little bit on the greasy side. in time.
Massive flu breed and don't spare the horses. Second floor, a lady's better dresses, children's wear, lingerie, negligees, and sleep shop. Hi, please. Third floor, furniture, household furnishings, rugs, radios, and televisions. Hi, please. Fourth floor, linens, toys, stationery, and budget shop. Fifth floor, alteration department, Mrs. Shop, and shoe salon. Uh, come on, Andy, let's get out of here. <laughs> Sixth floor, men's furnishings, household equipment, and stoves. Gangsters, explain to me how we got up here on the 12th floor. Oh, shut up, man. They, if they bust that fur coat in all the recent departments, I's a goner. Oh, take it easy, Kingfish. Elevators will be here in a minute. Elevator nothing. We'll go down to fire escape. Yeah. I think it's the sixth floor. Oh. Excuse me, please. It requires several alterations. Sapphire, Sapphire, don't do it, Sapphire, don't do it. George, what are you doing here? What in the world are you talking about? Yes, miss, now that I have the new fur coat, this dress will have to be shortened at least three inches. Andy, Andy, Andy. <laughs> I don't see why we had to go to all this fuss just cause Claire Wilson and her fiance coming over. Ever since she met that rich fella, she's just been lording it all over the rest of us. I'm going to show her that we're just as social as she is. Don't you think you better take off your coat? You're in the house, you know. <laughs> no, sir. I'm really rubbing this coat in. <laughs> oh, Claire Wilson, do come in. It's so nice of you to ask us, darling. Heaven's talk in the car. He'll be right in. I just got home myself, darling. I haven't had a chance to take my expensive fur coat off yet. <laughs> Claire, this is my husband, George. He's a successful businessman, you know. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Stevens? How do you do? How do you do? I'm sorry. That certainly is a beautiful coat you're wearing. Why, it's just lovely. Oh, it's just a little something George picked up. Now, Claire, do sit down. Oh, that must be Herman. I'll get it. I'm so anxious for him to see your new coat, Sapphire. He knows so much about furs. Come right in, Herman. I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Steven! And that coat! <laughs> Honey, our society deed has come and gone. 